Hello everyone. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about the concept backpatching in compiler design. Backpatching is the concept which is used to generate the code for Boolean expressions and flow of control statements in one pass. The main difficulty with code generation in one pass is that we may not be knowing the target of the branch instruction when we generate the flow of control statements. Backpatching is the technique which will get rid of this problem. The idea is initially it will generate the branch instruction with empty targets. Later when the target is known it will fill the label of the branch instructions. So that is what it is called as back patching. Patching means attaching the labels. Back means after the target is known we are attaching the labels. We utilize three functions to modify the list of jumps or branches. First one is make list of i. It will create a new list which includes only i and returns a pointer to the newly generated list. Merge of p1, p2 will concatenate the list pointer to by p1 and p2 and returns a pointer to the concatenated list. Back patch of p, i. Here it inserts i as the target label for each of the instructions on the record which is pointed to by p. Whatever instructions pointed to by p will be having i as the target label. Now let us see about the grammar and semantic actions associated with the backpatching concept. So we have the productions which includes R operation, AND operation, NOT operation, assignment operation, logical expression, boolean operators true and false and we have uh, one more uh, variable called m it derives epsilon and the purpose of m is to store the address of the next instruction. So we will see the semantic actions one by one. So for each uh, left hand side variable we will be having the true list and false list. So first we will discuss about this true list and false list afterwards we will discuss the concept of backpatching. So if we come to the R operation the left hand side will become true only when either of b1 is true or b2 is true. So both b1 and b2 will be there in the true list of b because it will check for b1's truthfulness if it is true b will become true. If b1 is false it won't leave it will go and check whether b2 is true. If b2 is true then also b will become true. So that is what we have both b1 as well as b2 here. But in false list we have only b2's false list because if b1 is false it will go and check whether b2 is true or false. If b2 is false definitely b will become false. So it purely relies on b2. So that is what we have b2's false list alone for b. Next if we come for and operation when b will become true when both b1 is true as well as b2 is true. So in b, b's true list we have only b2's true list because if b1 is true then also it will check for b2. So if b2 is true definitely b will become true. So it purely relies on the result of b2. So that is what we have only b2 here. If we check for false list it will have both b1 as well as b2 because if b1 is false b will become false. And uh, if b1 is true and then b2 becomes false then also b will become false. So it relies on both b1 as well as b2. So you, you have uh, merge of b1's false list and b2's false list. Next we have b tends to not b1. So here if b1 is false b will become true, b1 is true means b will become false. It is complement of each other and assignment means whatever there for b1 will be assigned for b and uh, in case of true list, true list will be assigned. In case of false list, false list will be assigned. Next we have the logical expression e1 relational operator e2. So here true list and false list is generated. So it is making the new list which contains the address of the next instruction that means the b dot true list will be storing the address of the instruction which indicates the truthfulness of the instruction and uh, b dot false list will be storing the address of the instruction which indicates the falseness of the instruction. So here after generating the true list and false list we will be having the three address code. So the three address code is generated by emit function. So what is the three address code if this condition e1 dot address relational operator e2 dot address is becoming true you will be branching to some instruction but we do not know the target label now. So we are generating the empty target and if it is false also it will be going to some other instruction. So that is also not known so we are generating empty targets. So here b dot true is similar to this instruction. So that is if uh, it will be storing the address of the truthfulness of the instruction. So if it is true it will be going to some position that position is not known now so empty target is generated. Same way for false list uh, we are having one uh, go to statement as well as uh, 
we will be storing the address of the instruction which is pointing to the falseness of the instruction. Next m dot instruction will be storing the address of the next instruction to be executed. Now let us discuss the concept with an example. We have the Boolean expression x less than 100 or x greater than 200 and x not equal to y. Now before generating the three address code let us construct the parse tree. So parse tree always starts with the start symbol as the root node. So here start symbol is b. So we start with b here and since we have r operation here we can expand b according to the rule number 1. b can be expanded to b1 or m b2. So, this is according to rule number 1. After that we have x less than 100 here. So, this b1 can be expanded to x less than 100 which is according to this rule. So, b can be expanded to e1 relational operator e2. So, what will be e1 here x relation operator is less than symbol and e2 will be 100. So, b1 will be expanded to x less than 100. Next we have and operation here. So, for and operation we can go for this second rule b can be expanded to b1 and mb2. So, this b2 is expanded to b1 and mb2. Now, we can expand this b1 to x greater than 200 according to this rule already we have seen. So, b1 is written as x greater than 200 and b2 is written as x not equal to y. So, all these uh, are according to this rule. Now, uh, m will be pointing to the epsilon. So, according to this rule both the m's will be pointing to epsilon. Now, uh, let us uh, see the three address code which is uh, generated before the backpatching technique. So, three address code means we are checking for this uh, relational expression here. So, if x less than 100. So, if x less than 100 for each instruction we have the address 100, 101, 102 etc. So, first we check for this expression if x less than 100 it will go to some position. If it is false also it will be going to some position this two statements are related to uh, this two statements. So, this two semantic actions are uh, used here. So, this is first two lines is for x less than 100 and uh, next two lines for x greater than 200 and last two lines for x not equal to y. So, in this case we are not knowing the branch target. So, we are generating the empty targets here. So, after the backpatching uh, technique only we will be knowing the target labels. So, let us generate the uh, true list and false list first. So, for each uh, left hand side we will be having the true list and false list. Let us apply the bottom up parsing technique now. So, bottom up parsing means we have to start from the leaf node. So, x less than 100 is the leaf node. So, x less than 100 is reduced to b1. So, this is according to this rule. So, check for the semantic actions. We have true list and false list here. What is true list for this? Make list of next instruction. So, next instruction means it will be pointing to the truthfulness of the instruction. So, the address of the truthfulness of the instruction will be available in next instruction. So, in this case x less than 100 what is the address for truthfulness it is 100. So, b dot true list here will be 100 and b dot false list will be next instruction plus 1 means 100 plus 1. So, 100 plus 1 will be 101. So, we move towards right here we have R operator then we have to go to M here. So, M dot I, M dot I will be M dot instruction will be next instruction. So, already we have executed 100 and 101 obviously M will be storing the address of the next instruction which will be 102. Next we are having B2 here so it is non leaf node so come to the leaf node here again we have the same sort of expression like this. So, x greater than 200 reduced to b1. So, go for this semantic action. We have to generate true list and false list. What is true list? Make list of next instruction. So, what is x greater than 200 here? That is current instruction. Uh, next instruction is stored in m dot i. It is nothing but 102. So, 102 will be the true list here because if x greater than 200 go to this is the truthfulness of the instruction. The address of the instruction is 102. So, b dot t will be here. 102 and b dot false list that is b dot f will be 102 plus 3 which will be 103. Next we have operator here so we cannot reduce it so go for m dot i it is nothing but uh, it will store the address of the next instruction already we have executed 102 and 103 m will be storing the address of next instruction which is 104. Okay. So, we move to the leaf node here x not equal to y. So, again go for this b dot true list and false list. So, b dot true list will be pointing to the address of the next instruction. So, next instruction already we are maintaining in uh, m which is nothing but 104. So, b dot true list will be 
104 and B0 false list will be 104 plus 1 which will be 105. So go towards up. So here we have B1 and MB2 reduced to B2. So go for AND operation here. So we will see the back patching later. First we will see about true list and false list. So true list will be B2 dot true list. According to this uh, tree here uh, B2 for this is this is uh, B2 and B1 is this one. So B dot true list is equal to B2 dot true list. So what is B2 dot true list? 104. So B dot true list will become 104 here. And what is B dot false list? It is merge of B1's false list and B2's false list. What is B1's false list? It is 103. B2's false list it is 105. So merge it. So B dot false list will be 103 comma 105. Again move towards up. So we have B1 R M B2 reduced to B. So go for this rule. So generate true list and false list now. So what will be the true list? Merge of B1's true list and B2's true list. What is B1's true list? 100. B2's true list? 104. So B dot true list will be 100 comma 104. What is B1's uh, B's false list? It will be B2's false list. What is B2's false list? 103 comma 105. So B's false list will be 103 comma 105. Now we have generated the true list and false list for each uh, variable in the left hand side. Now let us see how to apply the back patching technique. So this is the three address code before the back patching. Now we'll see after back patching. After back patching means here we are inserting go to one or two. How it comes? That means you consider this uh, R operation here. What we have back patch of B one's false list comma M dot instruction. So what is M dot instruction here according to R operation one or two? What is B one dot false list here? This is B one dot false list. It is pointing to the line number hundred. Uh, sorry, false list is hundred and one. So 101 means here you have to attach the label 102 which is available in m dot instruction. In the same way if you see for and operation here we have one m and what is back patch of b1 dot true list. What is b1 dot true list for and operation 102. So what is m here 104. So you have to attach the target label 104 for the line number 102. So here 102 the go to statement will be going to 104. So according to the logic if x greater than 200 becomes true it has to skip this line 103 and go to 104. So thus it is attaching the label after the target is known. So from this lecture we understood about the concept of back patching. Thank you.